Hello and welcome back everyone to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Before we get into the second segment of the show where we'll be transitioning from football to hockey, I do ask and want to remind you again to please leave a tip or donation. Let me get rid of that graphic here at the link gsmc.cloud. It is greatly appreciated. Huge support to the network, so do please consider that. Getting into today's second segment, like I said, transitioning from football to to hockey, where we have to give our due respect to the Eastern Conference representative of the Stanley Cup Final, the Florida Panthers, obviously winning the Eastern Conference Finals in six games over the New York Rangers. We've talked a lot about this Florida Panthers team, and we talked a lot about how they have come together as a collective unit, wanting to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals like they did last year, but want to win it this time around. So congratulations to the Florida Panthers. We will have a proper Stanley Cup Finals preview tomorrow. I know this series is set. We will give the Edmonton Oilers their due respect as well out of the Western Conference. But let's focus on the Florida Panthers and how they got to this point, returning to the Stanley Cup Finals. This Florida Panthers team is one of those teams where you really cannot find a weakness within them. They just have fantastic players that may not be stars of the league. They may not be guys who will be facing definitely in McDavid and Dreisaitl, but they are well-rounded and balanced players who come together as a team, as a collective, to reach their one true goal, and that is winning the Stanley Cup. Obviously, beating a, a New York Rangers team that had that same desire, had been to the conference finals as well before. So, Congratulations to the Florida Panthers yet again. I cannot sing their praises enough. But I just want to highlight three uh, breakout players in terms of fantasy and for the season that the Florida Panthers have that are going to be very integral to them finally breaking through and winning their first title in their history. Starting off with a player who I seem to have kind of transformed into this huge fantasy player. I I predicted that he would have a breakout series against the New York Rangers, and he didn't prove me wrong. Sam Reinhart, a fantastic overall player, strong in almost every facet of hockey. He is such a fantastic player to watch, and this season, he uh, could do no wrong in terms of fantasy and on the ice. 340.15 340.15 fantasy points this season. Six fantasy points per game. So as you can see, like I said, he's not going to be one of the stars in terms of fantasy. Obviously, he's not even one of the bigger stars in the league. But Sam Reinhardt is one of those players who you, you can't help but love, especially when you're looking for a guy whether it be in your daily fantasy hockey team or just your fantasy hockey team proper, that will just deliver for you in every occasion, in every big moment. We had some huge moments in this series on the power play in terms of defensively. He had a lot of hits. He's so strong in the faceoff. So kudos to Sam Reinhart for being one of those fantasy players you can always rely on. But moving on to another Sam, and Sam Bennett, who has just come on strong these past couple of games. I think he's going to have a huge Stanley Cup final. Had a great fantasy season as well, along with Sam Reinhart. He had only 154 fantasy points this season, but he averaged 7.7 fantasy points a game. Yet another one of those guys you can just rely on off the bench as a utility option this fantasy season. And in the the come Stanley Cup final time, we'll be tasked with trying to combat an Edmonton Oilers team who is so potent offensively and on the power play in every facet of their game. Look for Sam Bennett to be one of those guys to step up for a big occasion. And coming in last, a guy who also is not necessarily a big point production, much less points than the two guys I mentioned before, but he is an integral part of the Panthers' defense that has been so good this postseason, and that is Brandon Montour. Only 129.5 fantasy points this season, but he is one of those guys in the Panthers' defense who is so reliant. He's uh, a top-level line kind of guy. So look for him to be the focal point of the Panthers' defensive mindset in the series against the uh, the, the Edmonton Oilers. But 
I just want to talk about the Florida Panthers as a whole. This is a team that obviously has had so much heartbreak throughout the years of their franchise. Never, ever won a Stanley Cup final. Obviously, they made it last year when no one was really expecting them to. They were not heavy favorites against the President's Trophy winning Bruins, one of the best teams statistically in NHL history. And they went out there and uh, played their butts off and swept the Bruins last year. So just seeing how far that this team has come with, with the way they've grown their players, the way they developed their players, the interesting trades they've made along the way. Sam Bennett, a guy who they acquired from the Calgary Flames a couple of years ago, immediately integrated into this team. They just never say die. And even though my rooting interest lays for the Edmonton Oilers in this series, I'm a huge fan, an Oilers fan. I want to see McDavid and Dreisaitl win as much as anything. I still can't help but appreciate the fact that the Florida Panthers are doing this without any true star. Obviously, you have guys like Alexander Barkov and Matt Dukachuk, you can say, are the stars of the Florida Panthers. But they're, they don't really have that one guy or a superstar on their team you can point to and say, hey, this guy is the cream of the crop. And that is why I so truly love the fact that they are in the Stanley Cup Final. I wish them the best, but obviously, as an Oilers fan, I'm rooting for my Oilers all the way. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But congratulations to the Florida Panthers, man. They just get the job done consistently, series after series this postseason. And they are truly one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, who I'm really hoping will continue to go to Stanley Cup Finals in the near future. I really love how they developed this team. I cannot express that enough. Look for the three players I mentioned to have huge series. Obviously, if you're still playing daily fantasy hockey in the Stanley Cup Final, look out for those three guys. But I kind of want to talk about the Rangers as well. Obviously, fantastic series. Cannot get over the hump yet again. You kind of feel for them. But in, in big moments, their big-time players did not step up, and that is the difference. You know what I mean? I think that you have guys like Chris Kreider, who's a Rangers legend, but still cannot get over the hump. Micah Zibanejad had a pretty decent series, but ultimately not enough high-level production. And then you have a guy, in Artemi Panarin, who I was kind of imploring to get going, talking about some fantasy players for the Rangers a couple episodes ago. But it does not mean that they didn't have a fantastic series. They just ran into a juggernaut in the Florida Panthers who just had a proven identity. And right now, the Rangers are starting to get that identity. But I just don't think they're quite ready yet. They still are stuck in this mindset where they want to integrate these young guys like Lafreniere and Capo Caco, who had fantastic postseasons last year, and guys like Will Cooley and Matt Remby. How do you use them to move forward? But they still have guys in Chris Kreider and Micah Zibanejad and, like I said, Panarin, who have stuck around for this entire journey, who they want to cross the finish line with, and right now, I just don't think the Rangers can say at this point that they've completely figured it out. I think it's up to Peter LaViolette, their, their coach, to kind of make that choice where do we want to sacrifice a couple of these higher level players to maybe bring in some younger talent to help develop this next generation of New York Rangers or do we kind of stay put and hope that this current crop of uh, veteran players has it in them to reach that level? It just did not happen for them this season. I think that it could have. I think that they had the talent to get there. But they ultimately fell short because the Florida Panthers have that identity already. And the Rangers just could not match it. But, like always, that is just about going to do it. Congratulations to the Florida Panthers. We will, I promise we will give the Edmonton Oilers their due respect because as an Oilers fan, I can't just let them fall by the wayside tomorrow. But that will just about do it for this segment. Coming up next, we move back to football where I will be looking at my fantasy college football, which makes its return to the show. Breakout players who I think will be the next faces of fantasy college football leagues should be a great segment we will be right back to talk about that 
Looking for your daily fix of sports talk with